All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hannah Mandipat. I lead our App Exchange program marketing team here at Salesforce. Um, and one of the most exciting things about my job is that I get to talk to you, our partners and people who want to be partners every day. And it never ceases to amaze me all the innovative things, all the cool things that they are putting out to help our customers be successful. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the App Exchange and hear from some of our partners and how they've, again, leveraged the App Exchange to drive innovation for our customers. All right, and to kick things off, everybody's favorite Salesforce slide. Uh, if you've never seen this before, what it says in a nutshell is that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make any purchasing or investing decisions based on currently available product. All right, so let's get into it. Um, I want to start by talking about the Salesforce economy. And this is a term that was coined by IDC when it comes to the impact that Salesforce has made on the business world. And there's a ton of great numbers on here, right? Um, in fact, IDC pr predicts that by 2022, we're going to impact nearly $859 billion in GDP. And that's a huge number, but none of this would be possible if it wasn't for our partners. Because our partners have invested in the cloud, they've invested in our customer success, we have been able to be successful together, and we thank them every day for it. And really the physical manifestation of this Salesforce economy, of our ecosystem, is the App Exchange. Now, before we start, I'm going to take a poll really quickly. So how many of you in this room are familiar with the App Exchange? All right, everybody knows what it is in the right place. Okay, taking it a step further, how, how many of you have either listed an app on the App Exchange or you're thinking about it and you're building an app for the App Exchange now? Awesome. All of you are in the right session, so you made it. Um, but. That's what we're here to talk about today, is the App Exchange. And we started this in 2006, and back then, this was a crazy idea, right? Opening up your platform, creating an ecosystem around it. Nobody was doing that at that time. But fast forward 12 years, we've seen tremendous growth, tremendous momentum, and this is where we are today. We're the world's leading enterprise cloud marketplace. And last year, we hit a really important milestone. We hit 5 million installs. And that's big for us at Salesforce, but it's even bigger for our partners or people who are looking to be partners. And I'll tell you why. In the Salesforce world, an install is not one-to-one. -one. one install equals one org. So that means that your app potentially has the reach to go to hundreds or even thousands of users who are in that org. So again, we call this a multiplier effect when it comes to app exchange. Your app has endless potential, again, in getting into our customer's base and getting in front of a ton of different users. And with 87% of our customers today using app exchange apps, again, that potential is endless. So everybody wants to list their app exchange app on today, right? Cool, okay, my job's done. Um, <laughs> But in all seriousness, we, we are here to talk to you today about you know, partnering with App Exchange. And no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're a single developer, whether you're an ambitious startup, you're an established company already, we have a path for you to partner with us. And it all starts by connecting your app to Salesforce. So whether you're built on our platform or not, uh, we have a lightweight way for you to integrate with us via APIs. You can build directly on our platform. We have the number one CRM platform. So if your business is banking on a CRM marketplace, you should look no further than right here. Um, and also you can innovate. So as part of our partner program, we're consistently looking at different technologies and ways for our partners to integrate and reach new audiences like, with things like Marketing Cloud or Heroku. So on top of uh, you know, your existing integration with Salesforce, you can extend that reach even more to new different customer bases. And the million dollar question then becomes how do you get started, right? Um, so we designed the App Exchange Partner Program specifically to help our partners get the access to resources, get the benefits that they need so that they can get started quickly. So you can build your app and most importantly, get selling your app to our customers fast. Um, so we do that with, again, the leading platform, the leading marketplace that gives you a direct channel to our customers. And in addition, another benefit by becoming a partner is you get access to our partner community. And this has a ton of goodness and resources that you can use as you're building out your channel business. Things like how to optimize your app, or we even have playbooks in there about how to sell with and how to sell like Salesforce, because that's a big part of your channel strategy for thinking about becoming an app exchange partner. And all of this, again, these are all benefits for our partners that are part of our program. All right, so before we introduce our speakers to the stage, if there's one thing that you remember from me that I'm telling you, it's that by becoming an App Exchange partner, you have a competitive advantage. And that really hinges around three things. 
One, it's access to our customers. I talked about this a lot today, but we have over 150,000 customers across the world, from the small companies to the largest enterprises. So no matter who you're targeting, who you're trying to get your app in front of, we have those customers in our base. The second is access to technology. Again, the leading CRM platform, and we are committed to releasing uh, updates to our platform three times a year, so all of that innovation, all that great stuff, all the new data workflows that are coming out of the platform, those are all readily available for our partners. And finally, access to the ecosystem. Um, this is more than just the 4,000 apps that are available on App Exchange that you have access to as well, but it's things like branding and events like Trailhead DX. Um, but the most inspiring thing about having this ecosystem is that our partners get to interact with each other and they get to learn from each other. And some of the most amazing stories I've heard are from when our partners go to market together to address a customer needs. So they found each other in the ecosystem, developed a joint solution, and are driving towards our customer success and business transformation. So I, could, I can keep going if you want me to talk about the App Exchange more, but I'm sure you want to hear more from our partners who are actually living this. Um, so I'd like to welcome our speakers to the stage. I'll have them introduce themselves to you once they get up here. But we're going to talk about uh, their experiences as App Exchange partners, give you some tips for partnering. Um, and I'm going to go through a couple questions, and at the end, we'll open it up to you all to ask questions as well. So we'll go ahead and have everyone sit down. So my earrings are um, giving a lot of feedback, so I will take them off. <laughs> Technology is not great with fashion, apparently. Um, <laughs> okay. Mike was uh, working too well. Right. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, so we're going to just start by um, going down the line and have you introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about your company, um, and then your role and how that pertains to the App Exchange. So, Dory, you want to Awesome. Take it yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Dory Weiss. I am the VP of Engineering at Encino. Uh, and Encino is the worldwide leader in cloud banking. So, what that means is that we help financial institutions of all sizes originate financial products. So, whether you want to open a deposit account uh, or get a credit card, um, start a mortgage, any of those things, those financial products that you're buying from your bank, we allow the financial institution to have a complete view of you as a customer and track all of the stages through uh, originating that financial product so that banks can make smarter lending decisions um, about who, uh, who should get money and how much and what the terms of that loan should be, and then customers get a better experience. Um, and so we were founded in 2011, and we actually grew up as an offshoot of a bank called Live Oak Bank. Uh, and they are a bank that doesn't have branches, and their initial investment had really been, if we specialize in our technology, if we are able to give our customers uh, a high-touch experience where they, they feel a connection to their banker, um, if we, if we give them that experience and we can originate their financial product a little bit faster because we've got the power of a good digital solution that gives us the information we need to make decisions in the right time, then it doesn't matter if, if we have the cheapest rates because we're giving our customer a better experience and so they will choose our product. Um, and so from the very beginning, we were built um, on top of the Salesforce platform because that customer-first experience really is the core of what we do. Great. Thanks, Dory. JJ? Yeah. I'm JJ Jakobik. I'm Chief Architect for Velocity. Um, Velocity builds industry-specific cloud and mobile software on top of Salesforce. We uh, started four years ago, and we were targeting a CRM marketplace, and so we picked the number one cloud platform in the industry for that, and, uh, and that, was, that was a good choice, I think. Um, what we do, uh, we, we, we work in five different industries. We support uh, communications and media companies. We build you know, a customer engagement platform for them. We build for energy companies. We build for insurance companies, uh, health insurance and employee benefits companies, as well as public sector. And, those are actually industries that notoriously have the worst customer satisfaction scores, and so our goal is to uh, improve their customer satisfaction and therefore help them grow their business. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I uh, have been at Velocity for four years. Eight years before that, I was working at Oracle building CRM software. 
For the eight years before that, I was at Siebel building CRM software, and I've been in SI before that, right? So I've built a lot of CRM technology. Great. And um, Jennifer, before you introduce yourself, we obviously want to hear about Metazoa, uh, but you have a very interesting path to partnership, and kind of you started it a long time ago, and you're essentially repartnering right now. So tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yes, it is interesting. We were the very first partner on the App Exchange in 2006 with Dream Factory was the company. And we came out with about a dozen listings over the next few years, and our change and release management tool, Snapshot, was by far the biggest for us. So we had a lot of success over the next few years and garnered a lot of attention from the VC community. Our VCs encouraged us to branch out, which we did with an API platform. But then we ended up with basically two sides to the company, and it didn't make sense. So last year, we decided to go back to our roots, spin out from the VCs entirely, and focus 100% on Snapshot. Um, we acquired the rights and the access to this original Snapshot product, and now the core team is back as Metazoa. So we are starting over, in a sense, uh, but we have a lot of legacy relationships and learnings from the first time around, and that led us back to being an Op Exchange partner. Well, we love to hear stories like that and keep, you know, keep everyone in the Ohana. Um, so, Dory, talk a little bit about, um, you know, the evolution of your engineering team at Encino. So, you know, how you've adjusted the way that you build and how you onboard folks, you know, because of the Salesforce platform. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things that uh, has always been... Um, a struggle for us, or maybe something that, that's front of mind for us, is you know, how do we how do we hire talented developers and make sure they have the tools they need to to build good software. And from the very beginning, uh, our focus had been on hiring developers who might not have Salesforce experience, but but making sure that they were well-rounded uh, software developers. And so, what we found in the early days was we had a, a bunch of a bunch of coders that we we put on the Salesforce platform, um, and first instinct was just to code everything ourselves. Uh, it took us a couple of years of having that experience and then having to unwind things that we had built ourselves that were really unnecessary because we just hadn't understood what the power of the platform was to, to do some of those things for us. Um, so, uh, we, so we started in 2011, and after a couple of years, I think there was a moment where we were like, okay, we need, to, we need to get smarter about the way that we're leveraging the platform. Uh, and I, I think that this is a, a dance that other people have done as well to sort of um, mature our Salesforce practice. Uh, so we started investing really heavily in you know, groundbreaking things like making sure people have certifications uh, and taking advantage of the training materials that, that Salesforce has for us. Um, so, so doing those things and making sure that our default is always to take advantage uh, of what the platform provides to, to sort of resist that impulse to, to build it because you can, um, but to start by taking advantage of the tools that the, that the platform allows. So um, that trajectory has been really important for us and it allows us to put our attention at the things that are more valuable for us. Um, rather than, than, than wasting time reinventing a wheel that did not need to be reinvented. Um, but now, especially as uh, Trailhead has become a much, uh, has become such a powerful resource over the past couple of years, uh, and now with my Trailhead coming and, and the Trail Mixes, um, we have integrated those things really tightly in with our onboarding. So when, when someone joins us, um, they go through the first four weeks, four to five weeks, um, is this curated experience of working through trailhead mo modules and then moving into uh, an onboarding project that introduces them to the specific parts of, of Salesforce uh, and then some other technologies that we use so that we can roll them off directly onto a scrum team after that and, and they can jump in and, and start building product for us. That's what we love to hear, you know, developers who are focusing on innovation and not infrastructure. So exactly. we, we hope that that's the case for <laughs> most of our partners. Uh, now, now, JJ, you mentioned this earlier, right? You, you worked at, you know, Oracle, worked at all, been working on CRM your whole life, essentially. Um, so I've, what we'll talk about kind of going to a startup environment and kind of an app exchange partner at that um, from an environment like Oracle. And... Um, Talk about, you know, why, why did you choose to bank the entire company of Velocity on the platform? Yeah. Um, well, and, 
early days, we made the decision very quickly to build on top of Salesforce, but there was some debate. Uh, we had built CRM software before, and so you know some of us would have wanted, not me, but some of us would have wanted to start from scratch and use all kinds of cool technologies. Um, but we didn't do that, and it's paid off great. Um, I was just listening to our CEO at a company meeting this morning, and we were talking about if we had started building from scratch, even using all the new capabilities that are out there. Uh, we're four years in. We probably would have built platform stuff for two years. We would have built apps for maybe another year. We would be selling, you know, for every year. We may have five or six customers, something like that. We'd probably still be like 50 employees. Instead, we started with Salesforce. We were selling within about six to nine months. Um, today, four years later, we are more than 450 employees. We have more than 100 customers. Some of these are giant customers, tens of thousands of users. Um, and more than half of those customers are live, and we're making a lot of revenue. We're bouncing all, uh, up and down around profitability and not every month. So it, it, you know, it was a no-brainer in the end to, to build on the, on the Salesforce platform. It just made, makes total sense. There's no other choice. Great, and Velocity keeps it very close to Salesforce. They're actually in the same, their offices are in the same building as ours too, so we see them a lot <laughs> in, in the lobby. So it's really, it's Absolutely. nice to see them within, you know, our office building as well. Um, now Jennifer, so talked about kind of spinning off the company. Now you're 100% Metazoa, focused on Snapshot. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, similar to, to JJ, like why, you know, why do you choose to stay in the ecosystem, right? We like to call that kind of our chronic partners. They, mm -hmm. they launch a company a long time ago, they kind of sell it off, do whatever, and their next venture is also another partner on the App Exchange. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the decision to do that and why you choose to stay in the ecosystem. Right, well, we've been around since the beginning, mm -hmm. as I said, and um, we built a lot of relationships with Salesforce. We know our audience really well. We understand how the program works and the ecosystem, and it's always been really beneficial to us. Um, just as an example, we were relaunching the company and trying to get our listing up, <laughs> trying to get our website out. Without either of those, we're calling customers, we're letting them know the name change, the relaunch, the snapshot 2.0. We were able to sell some of our biggest customers to date, Fortune 100, during that time period. No website, no listing, That's new amazing. name. That's a powerful testament to the Salesforce ecosystem. It really, what we learned is it really enables a small company to bring their ideas to market more than anything else we could have utilized. So we're back and we're glad to have you. All right, so JJ, I want to go back to you a little bit. Um, so a big part of becoming a partner is, you know, you get to meet with our technical team. Um, they kind of take a look at your app, give you some advice. Um, so talk a little bit about um, that experience that you've had with our, our technical evangelist team, or our RTE team, um, and talk about the relationships that you've built, you know, through that relationship with our RTE team through to other people at Salesforce. Yeah, when we started, uh, we didn't really have a lot of Salesforce experience on the team, so of course we hired some of that. Uh, but the tech enablement uh, advisor for us was cr crucial in helping us to, to get over that learning curve very quickly. It was very important and helpful to make some really good choices, because there's still plenty of choices you can make in how you build on top of Salesforce, helping us avoid the pitfalls of building something ourselves when it already exists, right? Um, and more, more than that even, uh, our tech evangelists really helped us to open doors to other organizations within Salesforce. Uh, for example, as we started to build out some browser level technology, uh, we were introduced to the front end engineering team actually and they helped us sort of advise where they were headed and talk about technology, browser technologies that are available and helped us make that choice. Uh, in addition, we're committed to, uh, you know, working for the largest companies in the world. So we spend a lot of money on performance engineering ourselves, doing performance testing. And we do that in conjunction with Salesforce performance engineering. And so our tech evangelist really helped us gain access to that performance engineering team, help to organize the whole cadence of how we do our performance engineering in conjunction with Salesforce and make that happen. So I highly recommend your tech evangelist. It's, it's important. 
Yeah, and, very and helpful. Dory, I'd love to hear your experience on that too, because I know um, you have made some close relationships with our technical evangelist team. They're they're over at your offices a lot, um, so kind of right there in the trenches with you. So talk about that relationship and how it's helped you guys in coming to market. Yeah, I thought that I was maybe going to sprain something, <laughs> nodding vigorously <laughs> along to JJ. Um, I, I think our relationship with our technical evangelists uh, has been just so incredibly valuable uh, to us over the years. Um, we meet bi-weekly with our, with our TE. Uh, we have been meeting bi-weekly with our TE for as long as I can remember. Um, and I think that for us, it's been a really valuable two-way relationship where we're both, we're able to give, um, to give our evangelist and then, and then by, by virtue of that sales force, insight into what we're thinking about, what our needs are, uh, where things are working really well for us, um, and, and where you know, the platform there's something that we need that, that we don't yet have to be able to, to push that information out. Um, but then also, you know, simple things like giving regular demos of what we're building um, and some insight into our roadmap to our TE so that he can look and say, hey, I know that you're really interested in moving in this direction. I know that we are, you know, in an early pilot of this new technology that I think you should take a look at because it might really change the way that you're able to architect this um, or it might lead you to a better solution than you're even initially planning for. Uh, and that sort of bi-directional input has just been so incredibly valuable uh, as we build out our product. That's great. And um, I'm going to have a shameless plug. Um, so if you're here today in the App Exchange Gen, if you're one of those people who raise your hand when you're thinking about you know, building an app and listening it on the App Exchange, we're actually setting up 20-minute consultations with our TE team here on site. It's at the App Exchange Gen. It's right across the way over here. So if you do have questions for our technical team, you know, any of the latest technology or, you know, do you have, is there a fit for your app or where you, is this the right direction? Um, they're all ready and willing to help, so stop by and schedule some time with them. Um, all right, so last, pa last question for the panel, and it's for all of you. Um, we'll start with you, Jennifer, but um, before we open it up to the audience, talk about kind of the future, right? So we'd love to hear from all of you. Um, you know, what's next for your partnership with Salesforce? How do you plan to continue to invest in the relationship and the partnership with Salesforce moving forward? Well, our customers are mostly Fortune 100, Fortune 500. So security and compliance is going to be a big focus for us this year. Uh, as I said before, we relaunched our Snapshot with Snapshot 2.0 and uh, the security and compliance reporting is just a big focus for us this year. Um, another is vertical industry focused marketing. We know that's a big push for Salesforce this year and their partners are part of their go-to-market strategy. So it informs us how we look at our product and decide how we're going to focus that selling in specific industries. So those are the big two. Um, I think the other would be user groups. We want to get in front of every Salesforce admin and be very engaged with the local community and meetups. Uh, we have actually, we're speaking about DX integration tomorrow night in Boston. We're in Kansas next week and we'll have a full list on our events page very soon. But that's, that's the future for Metazoa with partnership. Great, and JJ? Yeah, so we are going deep in our industry technology. We've been building a lot, and we're going deeper and building even more. Um, our strategy has always been to build additively on top of Salesforce, even the apps. So we, we build on top of Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, CRM. And that strategy is working uh, because Salesforce gives us every four months these little gifts of new tools and technologies you know, that we can leverage. Um, we participated in a couple of pilots, for example. We were in, in the Salesforce DX pilot last year and it played with that. That's important to our productivity. Um, we participated in the Einstein pilot and we actually just uh, announced last fall a, a new product that we call Vela, sort of a reimagining, it's a mobile app that reimagines how insurance will work in the 21st century where millennials you know, don't have a lot of time. Part of that is a chatbot, and the chatbot is a mashup of actually three different AI technologies. Uh, you type into the, the chatbot. We used Watson to figure out intent. What are they trying to do? Um, we've used Einstein to figure out their sentiment. Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they interested? Are they a flight risk? That kind of thing. Um, and we actually had our own 
AI technology that we built, sort of a machine learn algorithm built on the platform uh, to, to give them a next best offer in situations where that was appropriate. And so we're, we're, you know, we're investing heavily in the platform, but our strategy of building additively on Salesforce has really paid off because Salesforce is giving us these new technologies, platform events I love, um, even Lightning experience. Lightning Console, I think, is the greatest thing in, in a UI sort of you know, ever. So we're, we're going big with that. Our customers are benefiting from that. Velocity is benefiting as well. And so everybody's winning here, and it's, it's great. We'd love to hear that you're taking advantage of all the technology, all Absolutely. that goodness that's coming out. Absolutely. And Dory, tell us a little bit about you know, what's, the, what's the future for in Zeno and Salesforce? Yeah, so I, I think um, one of the areas that we're really focused on right now is uh, we initially were selling to, to banks and financial institutions in the U.S. and just within the past year or so have started to, to pivot to, to move internationally. Um, and the fact, and, and this won't surprise anyone, that financial institutions uh, are incredibly risk averse and the, the privacy and security standards that they have to uphold are, are incredibly high. So as Salesforce moves into different areas um, and can meet data residency requirements, uh, across the globe, that opens doors for us that, that would not be open otherwise. So um, as data centers has, have opened in Canada and in other places, we're able to follow along behind them and, and our, mo our market expands every time, every time Salesforce um, is able to open another data center. Um, and, and likewise, the work that Salesforce is doing around GDPR, um, that's stuff that we can take advantage of. and, and isn't so much a, a change in the product or a next phase in the product, but in terms of um, our market and, and the customers that we're able to service, that's a, that's a, profound, uh, a profound advantage for us moving forward. Um, we're also really excited about partnering with Salesforce around Financial Services Cloud. Uh, we went to market with, uh, with Salesforce this past year. Um, with our solution around retail lending uh, and making sure that as Salesforce moves into, the, into financial services cloud, um, that our products work, work seamlessly together and that um, things like person account support, that, that, that our products just mesh together seamlessly um, is really you know, the, next, the next year or two of, of work for us. Right, and um, you know, a theme that you guys probably heard around, you know, the future is industry, and it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, industry is a big part of our strategy from a Salesforce perspective, and you know, the fact that all three of these, you know, partners on here are investing in it, it's another great way to kind of. That's how we do use our partners to go to market from an industry perspective. So it is, it's a very strategic play for us. Um, if you're thinking about building an app, I would highly, highly suggest thinking about your industry strategy as well and how you go vertical. All right, so um, I want to open it up to questions from the audience. If you do have any questions, please come up to one of the mics on either side, and then we can take a few before we wrap up. Or we can just <laughs> look at each other. <laughs> uh, oh, go ahead. If you want to say it, I can probably repeat it for the room, too. That's a great question. So the question for the room was, um, before you build an app, how do you verify the need? How do you kind of survey your customers and verify that information beforehand? So anyone want to tackle it? It, it definitely helps to have a customer. Um, it can be difficult to have a customer to start with, but the whole minimum uh, viable product is a really good way to go. It, if, you, if you build something, and you go to a prospect with something, even if it's not done or it's not perfect, they will give you questions and requirements and things that they wouldn't give you if you just went to them saying, can I do this or whatever. So you may have to start without it. Uh, if you're the only one in a market, you may be in a market that doesn't exist. So don't go against the big guys, but you know, it's good to have competitors actually. Mm -hmm. And I, I think to that point, one of the things that's nice about the App Exchange and nice about the Salesforce ecosystem is that um, packaging creates the barrier to entry for, for producing an MVP very, very low. And you can iterate very quickly. Um, the overhead of, of giving your customer something that they can install into their org, it's, it, it's very low, low overhead to that. So I do think that, that getting something into someone's hand and validate it uh, and then increment is a, is a really good approach. 
we built Snapshot because we needed it, actually. It wasn't intended to be on the App Exchange. We needed a way to manage our metadata. Uh, we built it out and realized if we need this, other people are probably going to need it too. And as Salesforce has grown and the metadata has grown, it's, it's become our, our big focus. But we needed it. We thought other people needed it. It's a great product. And if you have a great product and you really believe in it, that's something you can focus on and take that to market using the uh, app exchange. And that's a great point that Jennifer hits on. Um, you know, if you are in this room today, you're a developer, maybe you're already an existing Salesforce customer, so you're developing apps for your company. Um, you know, chances are there's another company out there that might need that same app in their instance, and they need it to link to Salesforce too. So that's where the app exchange opens up that other channel for you to monetize that app, right? Might be another business um, to add on, but just something to think about if you are currently a customer and you know are thinking about building apps um, that you could potentially commercialize. Any other questions? All right. We don't have to ask, ask any more questions. They've done a lot. But um, thank you to our guest speakers today. Um, I do want to leave you with one final slide before we all leave. Um, but you know, if you're interested in learning more, becoming a partner, uh, we are here at Trailhead DX, the App Exchange Den. Like I mentioned, it's right over there. There's a nice view of the street, um, nice and sunny. Uh, we have consultations where you could book time with both our partner specialists and our technical specialists, so you could get all your questions answered. You could also go to joinappexchange.com online to learn more. Um, but really, we would love for you to stop by our App Exchange Den. It's Appy's birthday. Um, that lovely little cat right there, she's our guide to the app exchange. She's just turned one, or she's turning one on Friday. So come by, uh, take a picture of yourself, put it on a cookie, get some stickers, and come hang out with us at the app exchange den. All right, thank you everyone. Have a good one. Thank you.